the Gospel from the Gospel of St. John, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. And this is continuing the, uh, the lesson on Jesus meeting with the Samaritan woman at the well in, in uh, Sikar. And we read the following on the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to her, I will speak to you and thee. Just then his disciples came back and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you see or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, come see a man who has told me all I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And they went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already, the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So then, the Samaritans, so when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to, to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. And after the two days he departed for Galilee, the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. that what she does, we are called to do 
as well. When Jesus enters into our lives, when he comes and makes himself real to us, when we recognize that Jesus is Lord and Savior and he changes our lives, what's the thing we're called to do? We're called to go out and testify. We're called to let people know what Jesus has done and who he is and invite people to meet him. That's the very first revelation. And this is something that Jesus, we find, wants her to do. He's very happy about the fact that she's testifying. Why? Because when we testify, we're inviting people to come and meet him. And his full desire is that when he gives us something, we pour it out into others so they'll be hungry for him and turn to him and be saved. So, the first thing we need to see is that if the Lord has met us at all, then our job is to go out and share what Jesus has done with others and invite them to go meet him. Now this leads to the second revelation that we have. The second revelation that we find here is this. And it really is in two parts. First of all, Many of these Samaritans went to meet Jesus because they believed the testimony of this woman. Again, as a reminder of the power of testimony. But we find at the end that they said to her, it's no longer because of you or your testimony that we believe. For we ourselves have heard him and come to believe that he is the Savior of the world. What that means is that at some point, even though Almost all of us, probably all of us, at one time or another, we first heard about what Jesus did in someone's life and came to it eventually. That's not going to be enough, is it? At some point, we are going to need a personal, intimate revelation and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ so that we ourselves can say, I no longer believe simply because you told me. I believe because I met him. I heard him. And I believe myself that he is my Lord and my Savior. It's a reminder that as Christians, it's not enough to simply hear about him, although that's wonderful. And it's not enough to come to him because somebody else said believe. That's wonderful. We all do that. But at some point, we're going to need that revelation of him for ourselves. We cannot rely on our mother's faith, our father's faith, or our grandparents' faith. We need faith for ourselves. And Jesus offers that. That's why testimony is given. Not so that you'll believe someone else, but so that you'll get a relationship with Jesus, so that you'll have that revelation for yourself. And be able to testify to others. Now, how do we apply that? Apply these two revelations. Well, the first thing that we find is that we need to share what God has done in our life. We need to share what Jesus has done for us personally with others so that they might hear that Jesus lives, that the Bible is true, and that God really does love them and wants to bring them into salvation. We need to be the mouthpiece that says, hey, it's time to wake up and come to Jesus because I just met him and he's awesome and he's all that we ever thought he was. We need to share that testimony. But one of the things that we need to remember is that while we might, we might all agree that, yeah, you know what, I need to share my testimony. There are certain things that keep us from it. And we need to move out of that if we're going to actually do the work that God wants us to do. The first thing that will keep us from testifying is this. We're afraid that we won't say things right. We're afraid that we don't have the words to share with somebody what it is that, that God has done. Jesus has an answer for that. He says in Matthew 24, that when we have these divine appointments that we're called to testify and share with others, don't worry about what we're going to say. But say whatever it is that's on your heart. Because it's not you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father within you. And so in other words, don't worry 
without getting your words right. Just share what God has done. The Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. Just share. By the way, that's, that really is the most effective way of reaching people. Just share what you said. Don't try to make yourself smooth. Just share whatever it is with him. And he will confirm that word as it touches people's hearts. You testify, let the Holy Spirit do what he does. The second thing that we need to remember is that we're, we're called to share because of the fact that every generation needs a witness. And if they're not hearing about what God has done, then Jesus becomes just a historical figure or a theory to them. And we're called to wake up the next generation and say, hey, this is important. This is super important. This is the most important thing that you will ever know. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because one of the blessings of having been uh, doing ministry with people who are in their 80s or 90s down in the nursing homes is that I have had the blessing of hearing from them wonderful things that Jesus has done in their lives. Wonderful things. But you know what? They're only just now sharing what Jesus did for them. They hadn't done that before. Why? Because well-meaning people have told them that if you start sharing with others what Jesus has done in your life, well, then you're putting on airs and you're being private. So you need to keep it to yourself. And don't let people know this because then they'll think that you're putting on airs. By the way, doesn't that just sound like what the devil will tell you? Don't say anything. Because you're being private. Let them not. They need to know. Your children need to know. Your grandchildren need to know. How do you think it was that Abraham told Isaac? Or Isaac told his children? It started out with sharing what God had done. We need to be a people who are sharing because the next generation needs to know that this is not some theory. It is a fact that we can all enter into because Jesus says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We need to let people know. And if we're not sharing, the next generation is going to have nothing. Nothing. I'm not saying that God can't break in because he does. But by and large, they're going to sit there and go, well, I mean, I hear all this. The pastor reads the Bible and maybe I read the Bible at home, but I don't see any of this actually happening. That's where you need to have witnesses. It's like, oh yeah, been there, saw that, did that, met Jesus. They need to know that. You wonder why it is that a lot of people in our younger generations don't know the Lord, but their grandparents and parents do? One reason, not the only reason, but one reason, is that they haven't heard the testimony of their parents or their grandparents. They need to hear it. So if you haven't said it, let today be the day. Let the, today be the day that you share with your loved ones what it is that God has done in your life. As long as you're breathing, you carry that message. So share it. Now the third thing, and the third reason that we need to recognize that we need to apply this is because there are those who will try to keep you from sharing it so that people don't, don't hear it. I remember one lady uh, down at the uh, reservation, down in Skirt Lake Reservation. She was in her 80s. And the Lord had touched her life powerfully when she was a teenager. She was very sick. The doctors couldn't do anything for her. They brought the medicine men in and they couldn't do anything for her. And she just cried out to Jesus to heal her. And she woke up in the middle of the night and there was this glowing figure in her room. And he spoke healing into her life in the name of Jesus. And she was healed. And she knew who it was. She didn't ask Lord who are you. She knew who Jesus in the room. 
You know, when God shows up, you, you know. Well, she was healed. The doctor said she was healed. But she was afraid to tell anybody how it happened. Because down there, at least at that time, it was still actually true. If they acknowledge that Jesus is the only way to salvation, even in some of their churches, people get mad at them. Because they're embracing the white man's religion. And it becomes a, 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 a real hardship on them. They can even be beaten up and killed. She didn't tell them. Praise God, she's doing it now. But the fact of the matter is that we're being told today, share your testimony and don't let someone's hatred of the word keep you from it. Don't let fear keep you from it. Don't let someone tell you that you're being prideful keep you from it. Because guess what? People need to know so that like the other Samaritans, they can come to Jesus. Jesus wants people to get saved. Now here's the second thing. The second application of this revelation is this. Very simple. Someone might say to me, well, Pastor, I have to admit that I believe, but I believe because someone told me about it. But I haven't had that personal interaction with Jesus yet. I haven't had that. I don't know that I have something to share. Well, you know what the good news is? You can have it. It's good that you believe because you believe someone's testimony. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But now it's time to move forward into what Jesus wants, and that is to have an intimate, personal relationship with Him. And how do you have it? Well, get along with, with God, get in the Bible, get in prayer, and believe His Word when He says that if you ask, you will receive. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there's one other thing. He says this, which I always get blessed by. In John 14, he says, If you love me, you will keep my word. And my Father will love me. And we will make our home in you. And I will manifest myself to you. If you want Jesus to show up, the just man. Call him. And his promise is, I'm going to show up. I'm going to eat with you and you eat with me. And you're going to have that personal faith to share with others. He wants you to have it. So today, let's remember that these two revelations really are revelations that we're called to put in practice. We need to share a testimony. Because people need to be saved. They need to come to Jesus and meet Him personally. So they can have their own thing. And secondly, if we find ourselves in church, and we believe because we believe what somebody else said, that's wonderful. But now it's time to go further. The Samaritans weren't satisfied with just believing because of what she said. They invited him to stay for two days so they could listen to him themselves. And then they said, it's no longer because of you that we believe. Thank you for your testimony. You brought us the price for a prayer. But we believe ourselves now because we know that he is the Savior of the world. Can we say that we know that Jesus is the Savior of the world? You can if you met him. And he's available to everyone for that. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time together. And thank you for your word and your revelation. Lord, we just ask that you give us grace that we would testify personally to what you have done for us. That others would come to faith in you. That they would come to meet you and be given their own personal relationship with you, personal revelation for personal faith, so that they can pour out to others also, and many more will come to know Christ. Lord, guide us in these things, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, sir.